Hey foodies, thanks for watching. As a child, I used to dream up what I wanted my future house to be like. It always started off as something gigantic with corridors and large expansive rooms. As I got older, the plans always changed and ultimately got smaller and more refined. What I mean is, I didn't need a moat, a swimming pool, a library the size of a small town, or a ballroom. Now, as an adult, I'm content with the thought of something a bit cozier. However, it's always nice to indulge with the thoughts from that inner child, that desire to design and build a home. But with supply chain issues and cost of materials, I needed to scale down my operation. So today, let's make a gingerbread house. And like all gingerbread houses, which are cookies, you want to start by beating the butter and the sugar together. And I'm using butter today, but you can also use vegetable shortening or margarine. It's a very versatile recipe. So you'll see that there are no eggs here, which makes it vegan as long as you don't put the butter in. So if you put vegetable shortening in, it's a totally vegan gingerbread house recipe, which is really exciting. The cookie is. Here we go, I'm gonna scrape down the walls of this. Oh, it smells good already. What I like about this recipe is it's it's a very versatile recipe, so you can make gingerbread house with it, but then if you have leftover dough, you can make people and you can make different flat cookies and decorate those up as well. Okay, so I'm going to add my molasses. And it's gonna go in. Oh, that looks great. I love the smell of molasses. It's so nice. And I'm gonna add my water. I'm gonna scrape that down and I'm gonna just lightly stir it just to get the water and the molasses mixed in a little bit. Okay, so that's really loosely mixed in. I'm gonna add my flour now. Let's get all that in. And my cinnamon, salt, and baking soda. And I'm gonna mix this up until it forms a like a dough. Oh my goodness, this looks beautiful. It just came right together. Let's pull this and set that aside for now. Oh yeah, this dough looks great. I'm gonna scrape off the sides of the paddle. Oh, it smells so good. I love the smell of gingerbread. It just reminds me of like winter and staying cozy indoors with a nice cup of tea or a hot chocolate or something it's it's just comfort food almost so i'm gonna let that rest for a few minutes i'm just gonna set that aside i'm gonna get rid of my mixer because i don't need that anymore so i've set that aside we need to design a gingerbread house and i've just got some scrap paper here and you can go really crazy and really big and elaborate but Sometimes simpler is better. And I find you need two walls, two gable ends, and two roofs, essentially. So I'm gonna start, I've got my ruler here, and it's a nice big old ruler, and so I'm gonna use that outside edge, and I'm gonna make my walls. And let's say my walls are about that size. And I'm going to leave blueprints on my website at glutenfreeguy.ca and you'll be able to make your own gingerbread house from the plans that I've got but it'll also give you a bit of inspiration hopefully so that you can look at, oh I see what he's done, he's done this and this and this and that's what this is. So I'm going to cut out my wall 
Okay, so that's my wall. And from this, I get to make my gable end. So I'm going to go down a little bit from that line, and I'm just going to mark the top and the bottom. And then I'm going to draw a line from there to the top. Easy so far. And then I would like my house to be oh, a bit, not quite as, as wide. So I don't want to make it quite square. So I'm going to make it more rectangular. So I'm just going to go probably to there. And then I'm going to go up on roughly a 45 degree angle from that top point up. And I'm You'll see I'm only really doing about half, and that's because I'm going to cut out, cut that one end off, set that aside, and then I'm going to flip this over, and I'm going to fold it right on that peak. So you can see right here, I've got a line here, and a line here, and that. So I'm going to just cut through both pieces, and I hope you can see the pencil markings through this. There we go. So that is our end. There we go. And you can see we've got the gable end and the wall, which is really nice. And then from that, we need to make a roof, and we need both of these pieces. So we're going to start by how wide do we want to make it. So I'm going to just come to one of the ends. I'm going to remove this paper because I don't need it. So let's square this off. There we go. Okay. So. I want to have a bit of an overhang on this end, and I want it to butt up to this end. So that's roughly how long I want it to be. And I'm going to go, how wide do we want it to be? And we want an overhang on either end. So I'm going to have, again, a little bit of extra on this side, and a little extra on this side. So it's roughly to there. And let's make sure I've got my marks at least in two spots. So now, I just get that done, and I'm going to cut this out. And that is all the pieces you need to make a gingerbread house. So we've got our gable end. We've got our wall, we need two of these, and we need two roofs as well, and that goes right on there. I find when I'm rolling out my dough, I like rolling it out onto parchment paper because then I can just transfer the whole sheet of parchment paper onto the cookie sheet, and I don't have to worry about the walls getting misshapen or warped or anything like that. So I'm just going to take just a chunk of this dough, and I want to take enough that I'm going to fill the whole sheet of parchment paper. So I'm going to say a little bit more. Oh, that's beautiful dough. And I've got my dusting flour here. Oh, that's nice dough. And I'm just going to lightly roll it in either direction. And my goal is to have the dough overhanging the parchment paper. And I want to take it to about three to four millimeters thick. It is going to get thicker as it bakes. But I also don't want it so thick that it takes forever to bake. Oh, that looks beautiful. Looks great. And then I'm going to take a knife and I'm going to mark my outside edges. And we're 
my headset head there. And there's one there. And one there. And then I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to just lightly cut the dough. There. So I have nice square edges. And I'm doing this so that I know where my edges are, so that when I'm putting the pieces of paper on there, I can get a nice square edge. Oops, that one a bit crooked. Let's try that again. There we go. Okay, that looks great. I'm going to start with the biggest piece, which is the roof. So I just set it on there and I just cut it out. I want to make sure I leave a bit of space and I would say just under a centimeter is good of space so that's actually pretty good for what I want so that is the roof done and let's do the gable ends or the wall I think we're gonna get one of each and then on the next piece of next cookie sheet I'm going to get the other two done. Okay, so that's... Oh, I want to make sure I cut it straight. Okay, there's that. Okay, so I'm going to remove these. And then it's just peel the dough away. Look at that, it's such nice dough to work with. So I'm gonna slide this onto my cookie sheet ever so gently. And you can see it hasn't warped or twisted any of the cookie, which is really nice. I can see my cookie sheets, my cookie paper is a little big. I'm going to have to try and shift it over, maybe cutting the, the paper and shifting it. But I'm going to go ahead and make the second roll. There we go. So this is the dough ready to go into a preheated oven of 375 degrees Fahrenheit or 190 degrees Celsius for about 20 to 22 minutes. These, you might, you might be looking at these and thinking, well, he's got so much room here. Why didn't you put like little gingerbread men or, or trees and things? And the reason for that is because these cookies, essentially cookies, are so much larger than a regular cookie. You don't want to overbake the smaller pieces. These need to be overbaked. They need to be really, really well baked and, and dry so that when you put them together, it doesn't just crumble apart. So we're going to bake these for 20 minutes. We'll see you in a minute. So the gingerbread house is done and I mean, that sounds really good. That's nice and dry sounding. They're just cooling right now on the rack. So I'm just gonna set them aside. You can see there's a little bit of burn, but that's okay. I'm gonna cover that up with some icing. And then with the leftover gingerbread I made some cookies so I also made some freehand cut how uh, not houses trees and bears and then I just had some leftover dough so I'm like why not just make some cookies I can decorate those up and it's it's good to go so these cookies and the gingerbread house as it is right now is totally vegan as long as you don't put the butter in it and you use like a vegetable shortening however the icing it's a royal icing that we're going to make and it does require egg white I haven't found a real good solid workaround for it. I've tried recipes with um, honey and a bit of flax meal and it's just, it's not the same. So 
it will have egg in it. For that, we've got some icing sugar or powdered sugar, lemon juice, and I'm just gonna pour the lemon juice in, and two egg whites. And this, you just wanna beat up. So that looks just a tiny little bit dry. I've mixed everything in really, really well because with icing sugar, it's gonna melt considerably. So you wanna make sure that you've got it really well mixed. And I'm just gonna add a teaspoon, maybe not even a teaspoon, maybe a half a teaspoon of water and just see if that makes it enough of a difference. That's probably per the perfect consistency for actually gluing the house together. So I'm just gonna set that aside because we are gonna thin it out for when we do the actual piping. And at this point, I'm just gonna grab my offset spatula, just a little tiny one. So at this point, you have two options. You can decorate the, the walls. So we can decorate the walls so we can put like the door and the window and things like that on it. So that will need to be a bit thinner or we can glue it all together and then we can decorate it. And I'm probably gonna do maybe the roofs with, with some decoration on it. And I might do some minimal decorating and then, and then stick it all together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of this icing in a bowl so that I have something really, really solid and hard for the, the glue, for the, the mortar, for the bricks. And then we're gonna have a thinner version so that we can do some piping work. I ended up adding about four teaspoons of, of icing in there. And you can see like it's, it's just holding its shape. It's, I think it's perfect. You want it to be thin enough that it will go through the piping bag, but thick enough that it's gonna hold its shape. And I, I think we're there. So let's scoop this into a piping bag and I'm using a number five piping tip, which is a small round piping tip here. And oh, it feels like it, it just, it's so silky smooth. It looks like meringue, it's so smooth. Mm. There we go. I'm going to put There we go. So that's that piping bag ready. I'm gonna drop this in my sink. And I've also got a piece of cardboard with some tin foil across, cause that's gonna be our base. Okay, so I wanna start by decorating and I'm gonna start with, by putting a door and a window on this. So let's put, and I find when you decorate it beforehand, I mean, it's so easy to, to decorate right down. Whereas when you're going like this, you, it might not stick so well. Let's put a little window in there. There we go. And then let's put a big window here. We'll put a big window here. And there we go. Now I really don't want to put the candy on right now because the candy really will weigh it down a lot. And I think that's probably all I want to do for that piece. I'm gonna grab a couple others and we'll see what we can do. So I'm gonna let these set up for about 20 minutes just to get a bit of a skin on them and then we're gonna glue them all together. We'll see you in a minute. So it's been about 15 minutes and it's got a nice crust on it, which is great. I'm gonna start with one of the walls. And I'm gonna put a little bit of icing on the bottom. You can see how it's just, it's a little hard to stick on 
And I'm just using a spoon to start, but I think my offset will be better. Almost like a putty knife. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so I'm gonna set that there and I'm gonna do the outside edges of this as well. Okay, you can see I'm just scraping it along the edges here. Okay, so now I wanna do the other one. So there's that one. And then for these, I just wanna do the bottoms. And then we'll worry about the peaks in a little bit. So let's do one of these bottoms first. Okay, so how do I wanna place this? This is the back and this is the front. So it's gonna go like this, okay. So to make sure I don't put my fingers in the icing. So I don't wanna squish anything. How am I gonna pick this up? There we go. Okay, so we're gonna go squish that together and squish that together. And it's already hardening. So I don't want it to come apart. So I'm gonna grab a few little pins and I'm just gonna temporarily hold it together with some pins. And then when it's set up, I can remove the pins because obviously you don't want pins in there. Okay, and while that's like that, I'm gonna flip it around and I'm just gonna lightly pipe the inside seam just with a little extra icing just to make sure it's not gonna come apart in those two spots. That looks really good. Okay, so now we take this one, and we squish it on just like so. Okay, looking good. And I'm gonna pipe the inside of that. That one's a little harder to see, I'm sure. It's also a bit harder to get at. I don't have to do the bottom of that. And then this one, oh, I didn't do the bottom. <laughs> so we got the icing. Oh, and I didn't put the uh, pins in that side. Well, I will do that in a moment. Okay, fingers, press. That's great, so let's put the pins on. Again, just to hold it well, while it sets up. Because I don't want it falling apart while I'm building it. And you can see they, they go in real easy. Okay, and there's that, and I gotta do this side. So it's eight pins on the lower part. And I'm saying that so that I remember that I have to take eight pins out from the lower part. That's important. And then I'm gonna run the piping bag on the inside of this just to hold the walls together. And it's the part that nobody really sees. During baking, what you can do is you can actually pre-cut the windows out and then they'll actually have holes and you can put little twinkle lights on the inside, which I think would be really, really pretty. Now for the tricky part, the roof. So at this point, if you wanted to wait to put everything, put the roof on, that's probably a good idea. I've pinned everything. I feel pretty comfortable in, in putting the roof on at this point. So I'm just gonna put some icing on the roof. I need a little bit more in spots. There we go. And I'm gonna get this side. Oh, that looks good so far. There we go. And I'm gonna use the rest of this up to do the 
inside of this just to get it all nice and secure. I think that's about perfect. Okay, so now I've got a slightly, I've trimmed this end just a little tiny bit. So this is gonna be underneath, so I'm gonna put that right flush up against there. I'm gonna get my pins and I'm gonna put one right there and one, oh, it's almost holding already right there. There we go. And I'm gonna run the piping bag on the inside because you can see quite a bit of light coming through. That's much better. Okay, and then I've got two more pins to go. That makes it 12 pins. Okay, and this goes right up and over the top. Just like so. I'm gonna watch where I put my fingers. So there's that pin. And that pin. And then you can see right on the top here, I've got quite a bit of, of a gap. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and fill that with my loose piping. Just do layer by layer by layer. So there's the first layer. And then I'm gonna go over top of it and try and create a second layer and maybe a third layer. Hopefully it doesn't sink in too much. Oh, right there isn't enough. So a little bit more there, okay. And I'm going to go right up to the peak. And then now is the time to start putting some candy on. So I've just got a random collection of candies here. Some of them I've sliced already for like little fire pits and things like that. I'm thinking these could probably go right along. Why don't I do red and white? And then let's put these trees up. I think maybe one there. So we'll do lots of icing on this. Before I do that, I'm just going to put a couple little dots, right, well, by dots I mean like zigzags, and I'm going to take some sprinkles and lightly sprinkle them there, make it look a bit more like, oh, that's beautiful. So I want to take a little bit of icing sugar and make it snow. And I find what the snow does is it covers up any little imperfections and any little mistakes or cracks. It gives it that snowy scene look, which is really fun. I mean, you could add a lot more candy. You could add less candy. It's, it's really up, up to you. I mean, did you know that people have been making gingerbread houses since at least the late 1600s? It's crazy to think that this tradition has been going strong since then. And really, it got even more popular to make these after the Brothers Grimm wrote their story of Hansel and Gretel. I'm really, really impressed with, with just how festive this looks and how enjoyable this, this is. My favorite part of making a gingerbread house is that you can make it super fancy or super simple, elegant or obscure. Whatever it becomes, it'll be tasty and sure to be a conversation piece. I'd love to see some of your creations. Tag me on Instagram at glutenfreeguycanada. And let's see this year's gingerbread town for the holidays. For the complete recipe and to get in touch with me, to ask any questions, visit me at glutenfreeguy.ca. Thanks for watching.